Welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. I'm Emily and today I've decided to go looking for some invertebrates. Um, arthropods mostly. Um, well actually I have no idea what we'll find. Um, invertebrates are basically animals with no spine and mostly that usually means insects but of course there are so many others as well. And so I'm just out looking for them today. For sure I'll show you some bees. I mean, I assume I can find some slugs, hopefully beetles, millipedes, I don't know what, we'll see. Um, there are so many millions of types of insects and, and gastropods, slugs and snails. Um, it's hard to know what we'll find exactly and, and what, what I'll tell you about. But in case people are wondering about some guidebooks, I've never found one that was perfect and I think it's because there are so many types. So some that I have here, these sort of fulfill different functions. This one is Insects of the Pacific Northwest by Timber Press, which is, it's okay. I mean, it has a nice assortment, but um, so you can flip through like with the plant guidebook I've shown on another episode and basically identify whatever you find by, um, by photos but they don't have a lot of things. I mean, it doesn't even have mason bees, which are super common, at least at my house. Um, this one is the Audubon guidebook. It has far more insects, um, but it's for all of North America. So, although it does have a few insects that we have that this one doesn't include, it still doesn't include a whole lot of things. However, either way, um, no matter what book you get, as long as it has a broad assortment of insects, you should be able to identify at least what general family of insects you're looking at. Um, you know, they may not have the bees that we have here, but they'll have enough to show you if it's likely a bee or a wasp, for example. Um, so yeah, I have, I think, three different insect books, actually, and between them all, I don't always find what I'm looking for, but I have some, some kind of idea, at least, what I'm looking at. So. That's that. Now let's go looking and see what we find today. So I just picked this stick out of the ground and uh, discovered an earthworm hanging out in it. Here he is. Make him wake up a little bit. Hello. I'll put you back in the ground shortly. The one thing I love is that just above this earthworm there's some kind of little tiny leaves coming out. I can't tell right now whether they're or what they are at all. There they are, and on this side, something here with some sort of a root system. At first I thought it might be mycelium from a fungus, but I'm not sure. Actually, this little thing up here, it could be the start of a plant, could be a fungus. And I'm gonna see what I find if I take off this. Oops, oh, here's a baby wood bug. He goes crawling under there. Oh, he's tiny. And yeah. Well, I'll put this back in the ground. So, um, here I found this little snail, which I normally call a forest snail because that's where you find them, but I think they're called side stripe snails. And they do have a, a dark and a white stripe around their side. He's pretty still, but he's not in his shell. He's just sitting there very still outside of it. And then further along on the log, there's a little hollow with a different kind of snail. Um, I think it's a some kind of Vancouver snail, it's called, and a mosquito who seems to be busy sleeping. I guess waiting to come out and find us later. Hopefully not. So look here, I found this teeny tiny baby snail. Um, I'll turn it over and see if it's alive. I think so. It's almost impossible for me to see if there's anything living in there, but I think it is. So turn it back over and set it down. But look what I found right here. I think those are snail or slug eggs. I'm not sure, but some kind of eggs. Little, little round white guys. There's probably so much more under this edge. I'll see if any pieces are loose. Oh, here, this one's. Let's see. I'll do this carefully. 
see what we find living here. Oh, a centipede. And some millipedes. Oh, here. I think these millipedes are either mating or just hanging out together. Here's one by himself over here. Did you know that if you pick up a millipede... Oh, here's the centipede. Going along. I'll put their bark back when we finish having a look. If you pick up a millipede, you might find that your fingers smell this particular way after. And that smell is actually... Um, oh, sorry. I'm so busy finding other bugs. Um, it is actually poison. They, um, they have some kind of poison in them. I think it's cyanide that, uh, that they release so that, uh, you know, birds won't eat them and things. And that's what you can smell when you pick them up. I wonder if these guys are alive. Oh, yes, they are. You going for a little walk? They're very slow. Maybe I should put them back. Oh my goodness! Look what was right under where I picked them up. I don't even know what these are, but tiny little rings. I wonder if they could be some kind of egg curls. I hope you can see these. They're so tiny, but they're, I mean, what, like a millimeter to a millimeter and a half wide? Super tiny. Or they could even be from a plant that have fallen in here, but there are so many. And it was all under the bark. So I'm guessing it's some sort of egg sacs. Either that or it was brought in here by some animal. All right, let's put this back. Give them all their privacy again. So uh, here are a couple kinds of slugs I found. Um, I'm actually looking for the elusive white slug that I've seen around this area, but I haven't found it yet. Um, this is a uh, Rufus arian. Um, which is super invasive. You've probably seen them everywhere. Mostly you don't find them in the forest. Mostly you find the um, banana slugs and what we call army slugs, which are like black spotted green banana slugs. Um, but yeah, these come in black and brown. The brown ones have a red um, edge around their foot. And, uh, oh, anatomy of a slug. Basically, slugs are gastropods, which means, and so are snails, which means they have their gastro, their stomach, part of their body, which is this whole part, on top of their foot, which they have one of. So this is their foot, the, the part on the bottom there, and you can see his little antlers coming out. And so this is your Rufus Arian. Odd that it would be called Rufus since they're black, but we do have the red ones too, which have an orange frill around them and the, the brown ones. And then this one over here, which are always much smaller, is a dusky Arian. And they look almost like they have little chipmunk stripes sometimes. This guy's not being super interesting right now. Um, they do have the little antlers also. And they're often in gardens. And um, talking about edibility, some people wonder if we can eat slugs. Yeah, lots of people eat slugs. However, the Arians, these guys here, the Rufus Arians, have some kind of chemical in them that can actually make your tongue go numb. And then I wonder what else does it do to you. So they have... It's, it's some kind of a poison. I don't think it's lethal to humans, but I sure wouldn't eat them. Um, banana slugs are totally edible, like escargot, except we don't have that many and they're being pushed out by the Aryans, so I wouldn't advise it. And these guys are very edible. I've eaten them before, except here's the thing. When you cook a slug, it becomes like a half to a quarter its size, which <laughs> Obviously, when you start out at less than an inch long, you end up with very, very little. So it might be sustainable meat if you're trying to get them out of your garden, but it's hardly worth it, honestly. However, it is possible. Rufus Arian, Dusky Arian. Remember how earlier in the year we were looking at all those maple seedlings? Well, cotyledons and also the maple blossoms even earlier than that or around the same time. Well, these are those cotyledons. They have, well, they're not the cotyledons anymore. They're the small maple seedlings. So um, they have their first couple of real leaves now. And obviously most of them are going to be eaten or die from lack of sunlight eventually. But maybe one or two of them might actually grow to become young trees.
Hello. <laughs> Look what I found. It's um, lungwort. Sometimes you find huge pieces of this, like, you know, a foot across. Um, and it grows usually high up in trees and falls out. And you find it in, in uh, pieces on the ground. It's a kind of lichen. I guess it's called lungwort because it looks a little bit like lungs. <sighs> Here's a more brown rufous area. Being very cautious about his journey across the moss. So if you've been following along since the beginning or close to the beginning of this series you will have seen me introduce some bracken fiddleheads at various times which basically looked like this this piece how can I separate it for you they basically looked like this but much shorter and I told you they would grow up to be tall well here's the sword fern I don't know what is that maybe four feet four and a half feet and here's the bracken I'm five foot six and a half, so almost six feet. That's how tall they grow. Uh, just beside the road here, having nothing to do with all the insects and slugs that we're looking for, is Devil's Club. And so I thought I would point that out very carefully, because you really don't want to accidentally grab this stuff in the forest. Uh, they even have prickles along the back of their leaves, but you can see they have all of these little seed pods here. Ooh, and ants everywhere. This one is crawling with ants. Look, we found insects after all. So cool. Pretty much you can find insects everywhere you look in the world. I'm sure that's not true, but pretty close to. They also have prickles along the top of their leaves. Oh, and here's some kind of little beetle. Oops, it's incredibly tiny and very shiny. Beautiful. Under the skunk cabbage, there's a whole little ecosystem of swamp. There was a frog, but he left. And uh, hopefully some puddle shrimp. And who knows what else we could find in here. So I pulled this little guy out of the water. I'm not sure if he's alive because uh, he hasn't moved, but this is a little, well, what I call puddle shrimp because you find them in the swamps in the forest. And uh, well, I don't know what they're actually called, but I have no idea what this little guy is, but isn't he cool? Whoops. There you go. With his little head, he reminds me of a termite, but it's not. I'll just put him down here. Whoops, where did he, he's lost in the moss. And I did find a wood bug over here. Where did he go? Okay, so oops, this is a pretty small little wood bug. There was a bigger one a moment ago. Some people call them a sow bug. Oh, here are a few in a piece of wood. Here, you can join them. They're super harmless little guys, unless they're eating up your house, of course. I was hoping the wood bug would present itself. Well, there's one here who's scared. Hey, well, I guess that's it for today. Um, I was really hoping to find the amazing white slugs that I found before, and I didn't, but that's kind of the way it is with exploring. You might have a plan and you'll rarely find what you expect or hope to find and in fact those amazing white slugs that I've seen before and the shrimp which I didn't find any live ones of today 
are all things I found unexpectedly, blah, blah, unexpectedly while exploring. And uh, that's, that's kind of the way with exploration. You just go out, maybe you have a plan, maybe you don't, and you see what you see and maybe get some great surprises. See you next time. Happy exploring.